In this next demo, I'm going to show doing some detection of possible installs of web shells on a box. There's different ways we can go about doing this. One is a simple grep that uh, it's going to return, well, some information that we really don't care about. But this is going to show me some remote file includes inside of my access log, depending on how people did it. Uh, it's not a perfect uh, set of regexes, or in this case, a set of simple greps to find things. I'm also telling it to uh, not be case sensitive. But you see, you can find a few things in my logs where someone tried a remote file include. I could also search for files that contain certain suspicious functions. Uh, let's say like GZ inflate, eval, base64 decode, and so forth. So I'm going to do that right here with this command. Search everything inside of var www and do it recursively. And there's a whole bunch of functions out there that have the, those particular, f uh, sorry, there's a whole bunch of scripts out there with those particular functions. But not all of them are necessarily malicious. So let's see if we can find something a little bit more refined. One of the things we can use is something called PHP Shell Detector, at least in the case of, well, PHP Shells. This is another open source project that you can get off of GitHub. So let's grab it. It's going to take just a bit to download. And it's fairly simple to use. Just a set of files that we have to copy over into the web server. So we'll go ahead and copy all of the shell detect files, the INI, the PHP, and the DB file, and put them into www. Now we can actually run that from a web browser and see what it finds. In this case, I just went with the default username and password of admin and protect. You may want to change that. And it's scanning to see what it can find. Taking a little bit, you see this particular file, S7, it has a couple of suspicious functions used, but doesn't necessarily match any signatures. But if I looked at what line 2 actually is, more than likely it's going to come back with something that looks just a little bit suspicious. It's kind of busy scanning right now. I had to pause the video for just a bit. But we can actually take a look at the line that thinks looks odd. And looking at that, yeah, that's probably not legitimate PHP code that we should be having running on our box. You'll also notice besides spotting, you know, functions are a little bit suspicious, it also does signature. So this one looks like a C99 backdoor, which it indeed is. And it finds a whole bunch of things because I've been using this box as a test subject for tons and tons of different scripts. This file might be more likely legitimate, but this isn't the only tool you can use for this sort of functionality. There's other ones that do things more than just looking for signatures or uh, looking for suspicious functions. One of those is NeoPy. So we're going to fire up NeoPy here in a second, and we're going to get it as well. So git clone and the location for NeoPy. Grab it, takes a bit to download, and running it is fairly simple. First off, we're going to just go ahead and bring up the help to show you some information about it. It can match on all sorts of things. It has signatures. It can also match on entropy, which essentially is like the randomness of the file. If something is encrypted or heavily obfuscated, it should look fairly random. So files that have a lot of entropy to them should be more suspicious. Also, longest word, for instance, a lot of these um, obfuscations just put everything in one big, huge, long, base64 encoded blob, and you can detect that pretty easy. Now, I'm going to punt, and I'm just going to use the default option of doing absolutely everything, all, all the scans of the lowercase a. And I'm also going to tell it to run automatically on all the file extensions that uh, it normally would do. You can specify which file extensions to scan. I'm just going to go with let it do it by itself, let it auto detect. So let me get my command again. I kind of screwed some things up there as far as uh, my notes. So 
let me get the correct command in there and fire it up. And it's going to scan my web folder for files that look suspicious. And it's going to categorize them by does it match certain definitions? It does do that. Does it have certain long strings? Uh, does it have a certain level of entropy? And then it actually does a cumulative ranking to see which ones it thinks might be the most suspicious. And I can only tell you from knowing and putting them there myself that all of these are pretty suspicious. The only one that may not be is this one because I don't remember putting that one there. But if we were to actually look at S2, we'll see how many different things it actually matches. Probably a whole lot. So let's cat that file out and see what it looks like. Yeah, that's um, a little oddball looking. So there you go. There's a couple of different ways of actually detecting shells or looking for shell-like activity in your web logs.